Friday the 13th was released on May 9th, 1980. Group of, group of young, I would say young college students, not sure if they're college students or they're just teenagers, um, go into to the abandoned Camp Crystal Lake, which has been abandoned so long due to, due to a number of mysterious killings, or murders. So it's reopened and released, and the same killings happen again. This has got to be one of the kind of like iconic movies, but this still doesn't become much of a classic to most people's eyes. But to my eyes, I still dub it as a classic because it at least tries to put something new into the slasher, slasher genre. Uh, Sean Cunningham has had a budget of 700000 US dollars. And even for, for the movie at the time, I could say that this thing had a very fair rating. I'll call it fair. I know 90% of the people like it, but if you want to go how the critics liked it, the IMDb gives this a 6.5 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes gives this a 62%. And the Metacritic scale gives it a measly 22%. Shameful, I know. Reason being is because for the fact that this first is the Friday the 13th movie, but it doesn't have Jason Voorhees until, like, about part two. But it doesn't have the one that we like until part three. As far as we all know, it's basically the mother, which is, I think, we'll just call her Mrs. Voorhees because it makes sense, that just went so super crazy she killed everybody that's in the, that's in the, the entire Crystal Lake, probably mourning her son's death. It's kind of creepy, too, how she goes insane, because she actually talks in Jason's voice. Probably meaning that she is completely insane. But after she gets axed off, get it? <laughs> hey, yeah, never mind, fuck you. Um, J uh, Alice, played by uh, Miss King, uh, goes, goes into a canoe and just, well, waits until the cops arrive, which they do. And then sooner or later, which probably is dubbed one of the, if not the best, Friday the 13th moments, Jason, as a little kid, jumps out of the lake and grabs Alice. But it was all a dream. Come on, you're going to pull this type of shit with us, Paramount? I Like, I am really tired of Paramount just putting shit like this here. They already put shit on me with Spongebob, but, I, but they're putting shit on me on this. It's going a little too far. But I do love the performances. I also love some of the effects. Tom Savini did a very good job at this. And yes, it was Tom Savini, the king of splatter. The man himself does a really good job of these types of effects. Even, even as Friday the 13th himself, Jason Voorhees, as a, as a child. I mean, that literally looks like a deformed child. Or at least some child with a deformity. Like, but again, I can't consider this movie a classic to no, to no avail until I reach either part two or three, because I think they're way better. Because they have Jason Voorhees, I think the action scenes are a bit better, um, minus all the shit that the MPAA, you know, has to take out. Because, oh, we're so scared of the gore and the blood, duh, duh, duh. I really think they should take notice that we don't really care as long as it looks incredibly good. Like, I really don't care for the MPAA just knocking all these scenes out back then for no reason. I mean, literally, if you didn't, if you, if, if you didn't bring your kid there just to see this damn movie, then it would be much easier. But no, they just had to censor all this shit. And am I, and am I happy about it? Of course I'm not. I'm never happy about it. But even I have to go a little bit deeper into what makes this movie both great, or the series great, but not as great as I would expect, like Halloween. So yeah, I'm not happy that the MPAA has censored all these clips here. But even through the, through the Vault of Horror, and of course YouTube and other online sources, including DVD extras of these movies, we can find the deleted scenes of these of this footage, and it has been found. It, the pr the qu the image quality may stink, but it's better than nothing. It's easier to see, and it's and if we can cut those pieces together, it may be easier. I just don't understand back through the 80s and 90s that the MPAA would censor half of this stuff. 
I mean, these effects were amazing. It's like anything that has something to do with the King of Splatter, they say, we can't have that. We're going to give you an X, not an R. And that's just a shame. It's a shame. It's, it's disrespectful to something with really great effects. And all you do is just, just cut it. You just cut it. When it's just pitch perfect and perfect for at least a movie that I would consider a rated R. You would consider, like, No Blood coming out through the skull in a remake of Night of the Living Dead a, an X rating. I consider that an R rating. It's gruesome and violent. I mean, the MPAA puts cut after cut after cut just because they don't care. And I should not care for them either. I won't care for them unless they care about the fans. I think that they should at least give a shit and let and not cut stuff. Unless it's like too raunchy or at least a little too graphical, then maybe I can understand. Because if we want to talk about a later movie, we'll talk about that after our next film. But like Jason has gone through everything. He's been through space. He's been in the lake. He's dealt with a telekinetic uh, woman. Uh, he's, he's basically been through hell. And he's fought Freddy Krueger. Oh yeah. Freddy Krueger. I forgot about him. That's why he's tomorrow on Horror Vision.